Good morning. Good morning to you all. Welcome to worship. Uh, it is the 8th and the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, uh, October 10th. You see it, the timeline up there. We are working through a narrative lectionary where we go through the stories of the Bible. You see the burning bush from last week uh, on the left, and, and that was about 1290 B.C., and, uh, and, then, um, and then they are in the wilderness for 40 years, or we're just at the beginning of their wilderness time in our story today. So you, you, it's not a perfect timeline, um, but it kind of helps you get a sense of that. And then next week you notice that we'll see the call of Samuel, which is in your daily, your faith, take faith home uh, devotions. Uh, and that is at around 1050 BC, uh, about uh, 200 years later. So that just helps us get a sense of, of the story the, and the timeline of our story. And today is about manna and quail, which we talked about with the younger kids at last Wednesday. And um, now we are uh, working on it together on Sunday, too. Welcome to those of you who are online, too. The reason we're a little late uh, today in some days is that there's a vibrant coffee hour downstairs. So I hope you have your coffee, too, and I hope you can join us sometime. But if you can't, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get with you as soon as we can. Uh, today we are celebrating communion as we gather as God's family, grow in faith with hearing the word, and go forth to serve and proclaim them. In Jesus' name. On Wednesday, we have Bible Adventure again, and that's going really well. And it's exciting and fun to do it with you kids, and also confirmation. I'm enjoying it thoroughly. We have four confirmation students these days. And um, then on the 24th is our Harvest Sunday, and we usually have a pancake and sausage lunch afterward, hosted by the men. Uh, there's a good chance that's going to happen again. We're going to talk about that at council on Wednesday, and I've already talked, uh, made some preliminary preparations. I think it might be a go, so uh, keep that in mind, and we'll announce by text, and uh, next Sunday, uh, more details on that. Uh, we bring our special offering, a harvest offering. It's like a fall appeal. Uh, it helps us end the year well and give thanks to God for our blessings and uh, the Sundays leading up to it, we're often thinking about, well, how do we manage these blessings? It's called stewardship. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, that today and the trust in God that 
we are called to in that. Um, uh, we also have confirmation coming up, but we did need to post push it back a week, so now that will be, Confirmation Sunday will be November 7th. Change that if you need to, November 7th for Boston, Riley, and Michael uh, as they affirm their baptism. And you may be wondering uh, about uh, Lily Newmiller who passed away a week ago or so. Um, I had her committal service by Zoom on uh, Friday, uh, but there is going to be a memorial service here probably on a Saturday. Uh, and we don't have a date for that yet, but I will let you know when we do. And then you can come here and participate with them, uh, with the words and, and via Zoom and live stream. It will be on our YouTube channel also. Um, amazing to have technology like that. Uh, they will stay in Spokane, and uh, that way we can be with them somehow still. Um, that's all the announcements I have. Uh, any others? Well, welcome again to worship. And uh, remember these folks in our prayers, as well as others that we will name during the prayer time, our missionaries and uh, those who are dealing with COVID these days and cancer, there's so many. So let us turn to worship now. Our opening hymn is, um, O Worship the King. And it is number 842. Please rise and sing. God's words of forgiveness for you today. 
by water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Be seated and we continue with our prayers for our world and God's mercy in it. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord.
I'm going to pass out a Smarties, a bit of Smarties to each of you. And I would like you to open it right away. And as you are listening to the story, go ahead and take one. And as you chew on it, think about how you are grateful as you listen to the story. What are you thankful for? What do you bless the Lord for? Or taste and see that the Lord is good about. So I'm going to do that quick. Those of you who are home, maybe you can find M&Ms or Smarties to also do this. Uh, make sure that you are, we'll make this an exercise, thinking with each Smartie, uh, but also enjoy them because they are tasty. When we were little, when our kids were little, we had a Smartie party, and part of the fun of that was uh, savoring each one together. So today we are having a Smarty party together as God's family, and uh, and take a moment to bless the Lord for the things that you are truly thankful for. There you go. This is kind of like the children's sermon, but I am going to invite you up too, girls. So um, I invite our reader forward and. Uh, she will be the narrator, and I will uh, say the dialogue that is uh, the Lord's words. The second reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 1 through 18. The whole congregation, uh, congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam. And Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the month of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses, Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and you fill your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him. What are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as you, as of you need, and over to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. 
Word of God, Word of Life, as we respond. Thanks be to God. Thank you. I'd like to invite the kids to come up and bring, if you have any Smarties left over, go ahead and bring them too. I have mine here. I was wondering if you would be willing to share some of the things just stand right here by the baptism pond here. Some of the things that you are thankful for. Did you think of anything? Did you, do you still have some Smarties? Good. Okay, you have a whole handful. Okay, let's each eat one and say what we're thankful for, okay? So, I'll eat it and I'll go first. I am thankful for the beautiful rain. Even though it's harvest time, the ground still needed the moisture. Okay. At the time, how about you? What are you thankful for? Okay, we'll get back to you. Think of one. What are you thankful for? Food and water. What? Food and water. Food and water. What's your favorite food? Pizza. Does that make you really thankful when you eat it? Me too. I love pizza. I think I'm addicted to it. Cheese. <laughs> Do you like spaghetti? That was the two things that I told my mom or that when I grew up, because we only had oatmeal at breakfast in the morning when I was out, and I said, when I grow up, I'm going to have pizza and spaghetti for breakfast. <laughs> 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 Sometimes I have pizza, but <laughs> not usually spaghetti. Okay, let's eat one more, because we have a lot of things, right, to be thankful for, right? So here's another one. Ready? All right. This time you go first. What are you thankful for? The rain. You're thankful for it too? Do you, what do you like doing with the rain? Well, dancing around in it? Me too. With an umbrella usually. It's kind of cold otherwise. What about you? What do you like for rain because it makes mud puddles? And what do you like in mud puddles? Yes! I'm gonna go splashy. Yeah. Um, gotta be careful about the right clothes in the rain. Mud puddles, right? <laughs> And you remember at, at Camp of the Cross, we have mud puddles we can sit in and with the lake, right? We can just be ooey gooey. So thank you, God, for creation, right? There's so many thankful things to be thankful for. Our family, our teachers, our friends. Um, how about this place? We can be thankful for our church and those people who are teaching us and talking about God with us. How about over there? What are we thankful for? Bread and, wine. Bread and wine. And what are they again? The Lord Jesus and the blood. Of Jesus. So it's Jesus there with us. God with us. That's the big thing, isn't it? Jesus dying on the cross for us. Let's say a thank you prayer, because they all have thank yous too. Let's say thank you, Lord, for all the things you give us, and especially Jesus. Who died for us. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord, for all the things you give us, and especially Jesus who died for us. Amen. Yes, I already gave you your candy. Do you need another one to keep thanking God with? I'm going to just give you, or you could pick a different one, different thing. You can do it with three steps, too, or a sucker. All right. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to dwell on this a little bit more. Those of you who are at home, if you would like to send a little uh, note in the chat about things you would like to thank for, go ahead. I would like just a couple more, a few more people to tell me of the things that they have been thinking about as they chewed on the sweet goodness of Smarties. What, what are you thankful for today? Travel, cause cause you get to see family. Maybe it's exciting. Safe travel, too. All right, others. Michael Crowder rescuing adult Sunday school. Uh huh. The little technological assistance. Okay. Thank you. Other things we're thanking for. The way back there. Life. Life. Yeah. 
Don't take that for granted these days. Others. A home to live in. A home to live in. One that's not leaking. <laughs> Heat. Heat. It was a little chilly this morning. I turned on the oven. <laughs> Others. Little snuggly kittens to keep us warm. Okay, that just warms a heart too, doesn't it? If you like cats, yeah. <laughs> and who can't? Uh, what what else? Friendship. Friendship. That's that's definitely a deep thing, but helps us in life. Others. Are we getting any chat responses? Can you say a couple of them? Uh, Diane Nelson that says that she's thankful for the almonds and bananas in her pancakes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diane. <laughs> others? Do you, are there any others? Okay. All right. Yeah, well, you know, there are things great and small that we thank for. There are the surface things, the things that we just see or sense or taste that make us thankful right away. There are other more uh, deep-rooted things, things that we can't even put our finger on that really make our life better, more wonderful. Um, there are things maybe that we wouldn't choose for ourselves at first, but then it turns out to be a blessing by God in some way, or God turns it to good, uh, that we thank for. There are all kinds of things. There are some things we thank God for that others aren't so happy about. Uh, sometimes rain is like that, where one person needs it to be drier and the other really needs water for their garden or crop. Um, we were talking about God's blessings and Remember, um, we had some fire um, in our pasture a couple months ago, and we were like longing for rain at that point because if we just hauled a little water up there, it was a drop in the bucket for what was needed to put out the smoldering uh, pasture packed grass clumps, you know? And the fire department came twice, and we are grateful to them, but uh, that still wasn't enough. There was a manure pile that was on fire, and it seemed hopeless to ever get that out. I think it is out now, but uh, then came the rain, and we were thinking just a, even a half an inch of rain on a small area is tons and tons of water way more than the fire department could ever hope to bring out. And it just comes and drops down from the sky. And we can't hope to get food from our ground without rainfall that, that we can't, we can, even if we irrigate, it's not the same. We uh, benefit so much from God's creation and God's blessing and God's providing for us in ways that we would never be able to do uh, for ourselves. Uh, to, so today is a day to give thanks to God, which we have started right now. Um, the psalmist and Psalm 34 at the beginning of the psalm, we started at verse 8. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And then you saw the first verse today. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So we had a little fun with actually tasting as we thanked for the different things in our lives that God has provided. Um, when, and uh, Martin Luther, a, a couple places in the catechism list those things. Where, he, where we say, I believe God created uh, the heavens and the earth, Martin Luther reminds us that God has created me and all that exists. He has given me and still preserves my body and soul with all their power. He has given me food and clothing, home and family, daily work, and all that I need from day to day. The list goes on. Also, uh, where the Lord's Prayer says, um, give us today our daily bread, Similar, similar meaning to that. 
and we we need to think about where everything that we have comes from and how it all ultimately comes from God, the Creator. October is our uh, seasonal moment, you might say, to dwell upon giving thanks and how we manage those gifts. It's called stewardship. And, and, uh, and so uh, we started last week with God's name and who this God is in the first place. And now today we have a story that might make us think about two things with our stewardship. Um, uh, that God truly provides enough, that word enough, and that we can truly trust God to do that. So there's that trust thing. You think of enough and you can think of trust. Those two ideas. As we think about this story that we have about Moses, it's, it's part of the large Exodus story. And we have this lingering showdown between God, and who's the Lord of all creation, and Pharaoh, who was the Lord of Egypt, and sought to be viewed as God. You remember God sent Moses to Pharaoh, and said, he said, let my people go, and Pharaoh said, no, they're not your people, they're my people. I won't let them go. And God said, yes, you will, here's a play. And Pharaoh said, no, 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 okay, yes. But then when the plague quit, what? He said, no again. And so there was this competition between Moses and God and Pharaoh. And the question was, who had the power to give life and death? And what did, what did they give? Uh, who would we worship? Um, as it turned out, Pharaoh finally sent them on their way, but then changed his mind again. And as they approached the Red Sea, here was Pharaoh's army coming with all the chariots and, and soldiers and power and might that the people could see, just as we can see things in our lives. And then God has Moses uh, raise his staff and the waters part, and they are able to walk on dry land, but um, when Pharaoh's army comes through, they are swallowed up by the Red Sea, never to bother the Israelites again. And so the Israelites celebrate and uh, sing to the Lord. Um, they say, the horse and rider was thrown into the sea. I will sing unto the Lord. But shortly after that, they're hungry. And that's where I say the showdown kind of keeps on because the question is, who's going to feed us now, Pharaoh or God? Will God feed us like Pharaoh did in Egypt? They were hungry and they weren't sure they had made the right decision about <laughs> who, would, who they should go with. Um, so that's where God says, at their complaining, God says to Moses and Aaron to let them know that God would send food. It's like, what will help these people trust in me? Uh, I already opened the Red Sea for them and set them free from Egypt. Hmm, what if I just make it rain food? You know, not just water, <laughs> but food. What if food just comes out of heaven? Will they trust me then? Would you? Did they? They looked at it and said, what is it? <laughs> and that's where we got the name. Nana means that, right? What, what is it? Uh, it was God's bread on the ground like this flaky white substance. And in the morning, you gather just enough for your family the people in your family. You didn't gather less, you didn't gather more, and you had enough. But if you tried to gather more, it would get um, wormy and gross and moldy and yucky. <laughs> and uh, so that was the instruction, except the day before the day of rest, the Sabbath, then 
you could take enough for two days and it wouldn't get warming. And that was the miracle of the Sabbath, that you would have enough even so. And so uh, it happened. They saw the flakes on the ground. They gathered it in the evening. They, these birds just came out of nowhere and uh, they could catch them and enjoy a little meat. And um, for 40 years, God sustained the people this way. Uh, quail in the evening, manna in the morning, God's abundance in the wilderness, <laughs> uh, a God-forsaken desert, and yet not so God-forsaken anymore. And God's economy is sufficient or enough. It's not too much. Uh, it's not too little. Uh, and um, so did, did the Israelites believe or trust? Not really. They aren't actually the best examples of stewardship and trust in God. Uh, we could have gotten a lot better scripture passage for today, I imagine. We could have gone over to... Uh, First Kings is it where a widow feeds this random prophet Elijah all during a famine and the, she trusts in God's word that the bread and the oil or the flour and the oil won't give out and they don't. So there was a faithful widow we could follow. Uh, there were also three men who were threatened to be thrown into a fiery furnace. The king wanted to make them worship another god that he had set up. And they said, oh, we don't know if God will choose to save us from your furnace. But whether he does or not, we're not going to worship any other god. And sure enough, in the middle of the fire, there is an angel as someone that looks like God walking with them. <laughs> uh, so, and then you have, of course, like in the New Testament, the example of young Mary, who says, let it be so according to your word, even though she would uh, endure uh, much uh, talking by the gossips and maybe even persecution for looking like she had had a baby out of wedlock, and, and here she just goes with what the angel asks of her. So there are moments of faith in Scripture, but the Israelites aren't one of them. Their faith stinks. It has worms, like the manna they try to save. And I ask you, what about us? Does our faith shine or stink? <laughs> A lot of times it stinks, it is wormy, just like them. Our faith mechanism is not quite right. It's a skewed or broken or damaged or whatever you say sin is. And, and we need something outside of ourselves to make it right. God says, what will help my people here trust in me? Huh? <laughs> uh, so God says, maybe I will send some bread from heaven and it will be the bread of life when they partake of this one they will never die but they will live in Jesus Christ come down to us we have the bread of heaven in Christ our Lord and as we talked about here uh, with the girls uh, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Here we have the gift of God right in our hands. Uh, and we call it a means of grace because as we receive a gift, whenever we receive the gift, it reminds us of God's goodness. And those words, taste and see, they apply more to that than smarties. They, apply, they have to do with the gift of Christ himself. And as we bite on the bread and partake of the wine, we taste that Jesus is really with us and that Jesus died.
died for us and gave himself for us, there is enough grace in that little piece of bread and that tiny cup of wine. God's abundant grace. Not too much, not too little. 100% of Jesus for you. So that, as we receive it, we are reminded of all the other gifts we are given by that same God and how we might use them to make enough grace for others. As we come together, we just need to keep hearing the message about God's faithfulness, and then we go out and share it with the others around us. Um, it's like practice today. You are here to practice stewardship, practice thanking, so that you can thank all day, all week. Practice trusting as you receive the bread and wine from your good God so that you can go trust one another, trust God all week, trust in God's faithfulness for you that God will give you enough, enough for all, enough presence, that your wilderness will not be God forsaken but God filled with good things to taste and grace to eat. And us, then we can trust God, that God is not the God of death like Pharaoh, that God is God. He was, he is now, he will always be, as the name says, not before, now, and always everlastingly providing for us. Manna, quail, Jesus. Amen. I invite you to turn to the hymn of the day. It's three verses uh, of uh, We Come to the Hungry Feast.
grace and grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray together the prayer that our Lord is teaching us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ <coughs> strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the in gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our, as we prepare to go into God's world, we'll sing a couple verses, two verses, of Go My Children With My Blessing, 543.